Hello everybody, I'm Karina Chin with KarinasCreations.com and welcome to my Facebook Live party. Why am I calling it a party? Well, because we're going to make three projects tonight and I'm also going to do some door prizes. And the door prizes will be announced from the people watching and the people, if they like or share my video, your name will go into a draw to win a prize. And uh, and then I'll announce the winners on Tuesday at my regular Facebook Live. Oh, I see Bilkis is here. Hello, Bilkis. Thank you for joining me. I appreciate that. And um, we're just going to have some fun tonight. I just thought Sunday night is a really, really fun night to stamp. So hopefully you like my projects. And let's see if I can go on here. I wanted to be able to see and respond to comments, but I'm not quite sure if I'll get it going. We'll see how it goes. We'll just wait and see what happens for one second. I wanted to tell you about a few things. First of all, with stamping up, when you work really, really hard and you have some amazing customers who support your business and you have an amazing team that you stamp with, good things can happen and you can earn what Stampin' Up! calls an incentive trip. So I just have to show you this. Uh, this is the cover of Stamping Success. And can you see at the very bottom? Oh my goodness, I made the, ca the front cover of Stamping Success. I was so excited. This is my daughter, Caitlin and I, when we were at the Alaskan cruise. And we happened to be on um, a cruise with one of Shelly's daughters and her husband. And he took such a beautiful photo of us. So I thought that was just so funny and such an honor. I can't believe our picture got on there. I also think I got airbrushed quite a bit on there, but that's okay. So I will mention before we even start that the starter kit is on sale still. It is $135. You get $225 worth of stuff. Or the, if you want the bag, it's $175. And then you get $225 worth of stuff as well. So that's really fun as well. So what else was I going to tell you? Uh, we've got the starter kit. Celebration. There's only one week left of celebration. So that goes on for one more week. And every time you order $60... Uh, you get something for free from the Celebration Catalog, or if you order uh, $120 worth of stuff, you get more fun stuff for free. So that's always great as well. Uh, what else was I going to share with Celebration? Um, any orders today, if you wanted to order anything, um, you're, you're going to get the kits from the projects that we make. So hopefully you will like the projects that we are making trying to think what else is going on. Um, I still have my birthday cheer kit. What am I calling it? Birthday cheer kit of the month, which is this one. I'll show you a little bit later. There you go. I can hide behind it. It's six card kits and it goes with the stamp set and the detailed birthday edge framelits, which are really super cute too. Oh, I see Celine's here. Hello, Celine. I'm glad you guys are joining me. Thank you so much for coming by tonight. Uh, what else was I going to say? Um, one week left of celebration. I'm trying to think. I'll probably just start stamping and then talk as I go. Oh, I did do a craft show at the Ukrainian Cultural Center, I believe it was called yesterday. That was a lot of fun. I got to eat some yummy Ukrainian food. They had Ukrainian Ukrainian dancing. Celine was actually there for a little bit to pick up some stuff. So it was pretty fun, I have to say. And just seeing all the kids dance on stage, that was pretty special too. So that's what I did on the weekend. Hopefully you guys did some fun things as well. Okay, I am going to zoom us down for a second. Oh, I remembered one more thing I wanted to share. So many things to share. So next Sunday, I thought because spring break, you might be looking for something to do either with yourself or with your kids. So I'm going to have um, a eight card stamp a stack. You're going to make two of each design. I had a lot of questions on how to make this card. So I just thought we'll just make it. Actually, it should have a little heart in here. I don't know where that sample went. This one uses the Home to Roost stamp set, which is a celebration stamp set right now. The rooster's kind of cute. And then I always put at my classes different sentiments. If you don't want just a note, I've got happy birthday, just, just for you, tons of different things. This one 
is uh, uses the Lily stamp set. That's also a celebration stamp set. And then the final card is my favorite, which is um, the, the happy, so happy for you. It's called the happy little, happy, happy little frog. But anyway, he's super cute. So I just thought I would mention that. Okay, are you ready to see what we are making today? And if you guys who are watching want to run and get some designer series paper, you can. This is what we're making. It is called a pinwheel card. And you need eight inch by eight inch cards, designer series paper. Now on this package of paper, I actually use the celebration, what is it? Celebration paper called Painted Seasons. And I'll just show you some of the paper really quick. It comes with this paper and then you get a stamp set. It's $120 order. Or if you just want the paper, you can just order the paper. You get it for free with the $60 order. But the patterns are really pretty. And you're probably wondering why I have butterfly paper out. Just to confuse you. No, I wouldn't do that. This is a painted season bundle. So you can see there's the stamp set. The framelits you can actually buy. I think it's $37 and I believe they are still available. Every time I go to order something, it's sold out. So hopefully that is still around. Okay, I'm just going to tuck that over here. Now I thought I would share, I'm going to do this project, but I'm going to try to do it with a butterfly paper, which is actually called Botanical Butterfly mainly because I think that Stampin' Up! will still have it. You can see it's got different patterns. It's colored on one side, black and white on the other. So it's very pretty. Very, very pretty paper. Okay, let me just stick that aside. And then this is what happens when you pull off the belly band. And this is why it's called a pinwheel. Can you see the fun pinwheel design? How it fits into each other. Joanne's watching too. Hi, Joanne. I'm glad you could make it. That's what it looks like. So I'm gonna show you how to make this really fun thing. So if you wanted to go get some eight inch by eight inch designer series paper, you need your envelope punch board and then your stamp and trimmer. And I will show you how to make this. This is a great way to actually use up all your paper. And I was just gonna go over here and see if I could see any comments, but I don't know. Honestly, I don't know how to figure this out. How sad is that? I have to get somebody to show me how you can check comments while you're doing a Facebook Live. I'm sure it would be some simple thing. Okay, let's see. Okay, so step one, you need to go like this. Okay, here we go. Are you ready? So you're going to get out your envelope punch board and your envelope punch board has a little spot to store your scoring tool. And what you're going to do is if you look over here, make sure I'm in the video, there's a tiny little mark. So it says three inches, three and one eighth of an inch, one quarter of an inch, three and three eighths of an inch. So you are going to line this up at three and three eighths of an inch. And there's two ways to do this. I like to start at the top, put my scoring tool against this little wall and press down. And you have to be careful not to press too hard or else you are going to go right through your designer series paper. And then you're going to turn it and line it up at three and three eighths again. If you have trouble with uh, this way, I've done a lot of these boxes. You can start at the scoring line at the bottom corner here and just move it all the way up. But I like going this way. That's just personal preference. And again, three and three eighths of an inch. And we're just going to do that on all four sides. Okay, and then you can tuck this away. Now the next thing I'm going to do is we have to cut out. It creates a little triangle. I don't know if you can see it. Let's just go over these score lines. So this little triangle, we need to cut this out on each, each of the four sides. So we're going to go this way. 
Now we're going to snip this corner out. And it does make a difference how you snip. You should try to do a good job. Don't rush like I always do when I make my projects. But I love this project because it's a great way to use up your designer series paper. I have a lot of designer series paper. In fact, I have so much. I have a huge sale once a year. This year, I believe it's on... May 31st, it's going to be a Friday at 9 in the morning until 9 at night, and it's a buy one get one free sale. So every time you come and buy something from my sale, you get something from the new catalog for free. Because I love it when my friends get free stuff. And like I said, if you end up ordering $40 tonight, um, I do have a hostess code. What is it? 6KT2ZDGJ. I will send you these three kits of the stuff we're making so that you can make them at home. Okay, so now we have a thing that looks like this. So it's really important to flip it around. And then what we're going to do is get out our Stampin' Up! paper trimmer. There we go. And I am lining this edge up at one inch. And I'm going to take the scoring tool, or the scoring portion of this paper trimmer, and I'm going to score down to this little cut mark that we just made. And then we're going to turn it and do the same thing on, well, on every side, basically. Okay, so that's the second one. And then we'll rotate it again. I believe I'm rotating 90 degrees. Not 100% sure. Oh, I see Sharon Waddell has joined us too. Welcome. So happy you guys are here to step with me. I can't tell you how happy I am. Okay, let me move this to the side. Okay, so this is the next thing that we're doing. So we now have this beautiful pinwheel pattern. And all I'm going to do, I should get my scoring tool out, but I tucked it away. I'm just going to use uh, my bone folder, and I'm just going to burnish the edges, the four edges right now. And then what happens is that we're going to fold this back. because I want my butterfly paper to be at the top. And then this is all tucking. This is almost like an origami fold card, which for me is frightening because I am such an origami failure. On the Alaskan cruise, I did origami folding or something to do with some other demonstrators. My daughter was the only one who could do it. It was pretty funny. Anyway, so once you have your flaps folded down, you're gonna start at the bottom and it's just like when you're closing up a cardboard box. So this one first, and then I'm putting this one over top, the top one over top again, and then finally your last one will go over top, but this is where you can tuck it in. And if we did it right, at least I hope I did it right, it's being difficult now, there we go. And you see how it's not lying totally flat? It's because I didn't cut it. I didn't take my time when I cut my corners out. So I'm just going to burnish the edges again with this. And that's how you make your pinwheel design. Isn't that fun? And again, you can see it a little bit better with this designer series paper. And the more you play with it, the easier it is to tuck. Now I thought this was super cute, but I wanted to add a sentiment in it. So let's get out the, what did I use? I find I'm really using this itty bitty birthday stamp set a lot. I love it because it's got lots of sentiments and one of the sentiments it has is it's got a late, what is it, a happy belated birthday. I am always behind on my birthday cards. I don't know why or what it is. And I'm just looking here. I'm like, where's my stamps? Well, I must have mounted them already. I did. And in fact, this one, I actually used my plate. So let's get this. Because we have this new cling mount 
stamps. When I set up my cling mount stamp, I wasn't very careful. So my label, my label doesn't match up with my stamp. It's now crooked. So the solution to that is pull out your amazing, your amazing, your amazing stamp apparatus. So I've already pre-done this, pre-tested it, so I know it's lined up. Because what I'm doing now is I want a sentiment for the inside of my pinwheel card, and I'm getting out a piece of cardstock that is four inches by four inches. And I got rid of the sheet. Hopefully, let's see if this is lined up, you guys. Nope, that is not lined up. Interesting. I know I would have done it on a grid. I always have pencil marks, but you know, I wanted a clean sheet for the video. Okay, that looks pretty good. Note to self, don't worry about a clean sheet for a video next time. Okay, I am pulling out my Memento Black ink pad and I'm stamping, and you'll notice I've got a plate under here. Normally what I do is put an ink pad under here because it keeps it stable. And you can't really see in the video where I'm stamping. But, ta da it's perfectly straight. Isn't that great? So easy. And I'm going to pull this plate out and get it ready for the other card. But I'm going to just wipe off my, it's really important to me to wipe off my um, stamps. I don't like leaving it with ink on it. Because it never fails, I will set something on there that should not have been set there. Okay, so let's just set this aside because I have a really cool doggy card to show you. Okay, so now that we have Can't Believe You're Another Year Older, we're just going to add some adhesive. And uh-oh, I ran out of snail refill. So all you do to get a new refill, don't throw these in the garbage. I had one customer do that. You can just buy the refill. So you just squeeze it. This part goes in the garbage. I actually put my name on it so that when I'm stamping with friends, it doesn't get mixed up with other friends. And my snail refills, I have a snail party on right now and I'm selling them for $4.90. A couple times a year I do. I call it a snail party. I give my discount away, which is why I can't really afford to ship it for free because I get it shipped to my house. But that way everybody can benefit from the snail adhesive. Okay, and I'm just going to put this in the center like so. And now I can retuck it. And let's see if this is starting. Oh, see how easy that folds now? It was just a little stiff to begin with. Okay, now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm taking some Highland Heather cardstock. This is one and a quarter inch by hmm, ten and a quarter inch. Really doesn't matter. I'm not even measuring. I'm not even scoring it. I'm just lightly folding it over. I don't want it too tight because I want to be able to slide off the belly band. There, I think that would be good. This card's really fun because I think you could even put a gift card in the center of this. And I do like giving gift cards. Okay, I just like giving presents, period. Presents are so fun. Okay, there we go. Okay, and now I will, just so you can see, I added a little bit of my tear and tape adhesive. If you haven't used our tear and tape adhesive before, it's a great product. Okay, so there we go. Um, you can see on my original card that I had, I actually used stamped a flower. Oh, my belly band's gone. I stamped a flower from the, oh, I forget what it's called now. Anybody, anybody? How is it I can lose stuff on my table when I just had it like two seconds ago? Can't even think of it. The Four Seasons dies. Hmm. You know what, guys? It will show up later. It's probably on the floor. Anyway, so my belly band. This time we're not stamping the flower. We're just going to cut out the butterfly with my paper snips. Uh, because this butterfly paper, it is still available for another week. It does have a punch 
that matches a coordinating stamp set, but it, the punch is sold out right now. It will be coming back. It will be coming into the main catalog. So you could get your paper now before it runs out, and then once the punch is back in stock, you can just order your punch and your stamp set. At least I'm assuming the stamp set will roll over. I don't know that for sure. I just know the punch will. At least I think it is. Thanks. Oh, thanks. Oh, Giselle's, Giselle's here too. Let's start. I'm probably saying your name wrong. I'm butchering names. I'm terrible. Okay, let's do the butterfly. I've never tried to read com read or read comments before when I do a Facebook Live. This is really fun. Okay, guys, what do you think? Isn't that pretty? So I really want to pop it up. So let's grab a Stampin' Dimensional. And I think we need to curl this butterfly a little bit. And if I had more time, I really like adding some silver sequins to the bottom. But I just, that would take too much time right now. But I think we could add a rhinestone. I always keep my rhinestones behind me. This is where I usually craft as this table. And everything is within reaching distance in my craft room. Because if it isn't, I would really hate to get up and have to walk very far. My craft room's not that big. Okay, so we have our card almost finished. The only thing is I wanted to add a sentiment. So I have a strip of Whisper White, one quarter of an inch cardstock. And again, I'm using the Itty Bitty Birthdays. And this time I'm gonna stamp birthday wishes. Let's see, and we'll get out my ink pad. Thanks. Thanks, Bilka. She says, super cute. And Sharon says, I like the card so much. Thanks, you guys. That is so nice. I'm happy you like this. I actually taught this at my card classes this month. And I have to say, the girls were a little intimidated by the fancy fold that we did. But everybody did it, and it worked out good. At my card classes, we always do... One fancy fold, one easy card, one technique, and one medium card. We always do four cards. And I've been running this group for probably oh, 10 years, I would think. I've been a demonstrator for 12 years. Now I don't know where the time flies. Okay, so I think we are going to do the birthday wishes here. Because I already have my sentiment in the center. And again, it just adds a lot when you can pop it up. So I don't, oh, I had mini dimensionals. I don't know where my mini dimensionals are, but I think this will still work. They're probably behind me. Oh, I don't like that. I don't want to see the stamp and dimensional. Okay, what do you think? Okay, that is the finished card. I just, oh, this is so funny. It's like this appeared by magic. I must have a little ghost helper in my room. Oh my, oh my goodness. I can't believe I did that. Painted Seasons Bundle. This, that's what this is called. If I just take two minutes and read my notes. Okay, which card do you like better? Purple? The flower one? It's kind of hard to say. Oh, Carolyn's here now. Don't worry, Carolyn, you can watch it after. I think you will love this project because I know you have a lot of DSP. Designer Series Paper, that's what DSP stands for. Okay, so that is going to be the first one, the first project. And then the next project, we have, I'll pull this out of the way, we have a really, really fun stamp set called, I'll bring out my little bucket of supplies and get set up. Happy Tails, and then we have a little Happy Tails punch. Just have to move this out of the way. Oh, let's see, okay, toss that on the ground. We have a matching punch that coordinates with it. It is $41, and it makes super cute cards. This is the card that we are gonna make. How cute is that? And this is actually a technique because you'll notice that the dog is only facing one way. 
So how do you get the dog to go the other way? Because if you're saying friends forever, you need two friends looking at each other, don't you think? Okay, I think I'm ready. Let's put this over here. The other thing I should mention, with Celebration only having one week left, I should mention too that I do, anybody who orders $60, gets their name on this sheet so it's almost filled the winner once well once it's filled or by march 31st i'm going to draw for a 30 dollar gift card so you can get whatever stampin up supplies you want and i may even be able to get you something from the new catalog i'm going to on stage so i'm allowed to order i get to do a product purchase premiere so sometimes i can get two stamp sets Oh, and I should mention tonight, too, because you guys are watching, your names are going to go in for a draw. I'll draw these on Tuesday, but these are the two prizes. So hopefully you don't have these yet. I love prizes. Okay, so let's get back to the stamping excitement. Oh, I see Brett's here, too. Hello, Brett. Thank you. You have to try my fancy fold, you guys. That was a card we just finished. So easy and so fun. Okay, so this is the puppy one. Now, I'll show you why there is a trick. Okay, let's get out my card kit. Here we go. I am a messy stamper, but I'm trying really hard to be organized for you guys. Normally, it is controlled chaos in my stamping room. It's crazy. Okay, so should I start with Okay, we'll start with this first of all. So this is the card base that I've created. It is five and a half inches by eight and a half inches and I have scored it in half at four and a quarter. If you've never cut cardstock before, this is one sheet of cardstock and it's just cut in half. It's actually eight and a half by 11 and cut in half and then scored in half again. So it is pretty easy. If you need help on how to cut cards, I'm gonna do a separate video for that because I got asked that and I and you know when I first started stamping I wasted so much cardstock because I would take a ruler and a pencil and make little tick marks on where I thought the card should be cut it was almost comical until somebody showed me the trick that you're just cutting your paper in half you wouldn't I wouldn't uh you would believe how many pieces of paper I ruined and it was life altering I'm telling you Okay, so all I'm doing is putting on Whisper White cardstock, four inches by five and a quarter. And then I'm also putting some in on the inside as well. And then we'll decorate the inside just a little bit. I always use lots of snail adhesive, or I really like the liquid glue, mono multi liquid glue. Okay, try try to say that 10 times. That's pretty tricky. Okay, so I have this one ready to go. And I have pre-cut this piece of cardstock and it's cut from using the rectangular framelit dies that we sell. The reason why I have so many of these is I went and cut these kits. So again, these kits, you can get one of each of these three cards if you want with a $40 order or whenever you order the bundle for me, the birthday cheer bundle, you're going to get six cards in the mail and that's what it looks like. So this piece here, I think I cut six kits. So I've got a lot of these pieces left over. So I thought I might as well, uh, might as well reuse them in a card. Okay, so I need my little paw print. And we'll just stamp this really quick and then I'll get to the technique because the technique is a fun part of this card. Okay, so we're just gonna stamp the little paws I actually like starting from this end, I don't know why. And it's just random stamping. Ooh, I switched ink pads, there we go. You'll notice that in the center of my ink pad, it's getting a little light and the edges are dark. That means I need to re-ink my ink pad. So whenever you buy ink pads, make sure you buy a re-inker because it takes a week usually to get the product in and there's nothing more frustrating than wanting to use a color and your ink pad's dead. Okay, so that's that piece. And then I'm gonna bring back my card base, which was here, and I just want to, well, this is still inky. Let's just put a little paw print down there, just because it makes it look so darn cute. And I'm gonna close my ink pad, 
because I don't have tons of space on my table right now and I will have a disaster happen. Okay, so all I'm going to do, now because it's a little, this is getting a little bit heavy, I'm actually gonna use some multi-purpose glue just to make sure it sticks. You can use snail if you want to. There we go. Yeah, Carolyn, I think you'd really like the birthday cheer. I wonder if it's gonna roll over. So I'm going to on stage in April. I'm so excited. I think it's April 12th. I never look at my airline ticket until a couple days before, which is not very good. I don't recommend that. But when I come back on the Tuesday, I've rented Boston Pizza and we're gonna have a bunch of people come and I'm gonna show everybody what we learned at on stage and I'll have the retiring list. So I'll get to know what's going on what's carrying over, what's not carrying over. It's gonna be very exciting. Okay, these are my doggies. So I'm gonna show you the trick to getting your doggies to face the opposite way. Okay, step one. I highly recommend, you don't have to have the Stamparatus, but it sure makes your life easy when you have the Stamparatus. And I'm tucking this up here so I don't have to look for it later. Okay, so the Stamparatus comes with a couple, comes with two plates. I went and bought extra plates because I really, really like it. And then there's my little tick marks. So I know where I'm stamp, where I know where my paper needs to be. Okay, there we go. And I'm just using my Memento Black ink. You can't really see me ink that up, I don't think. But oh, I got to get that magnet out of the way. I'll just give it a little rub. Okay, this is going to be for my first doggy. Oh, oh, I shouldn't have moved him. Because with my first doggy, I want him to have some patches. So this is actually the patch, what the patch stamp looks like. And all you do to line it up is place it stamp side down. Make sure it's clean. And then when you close your plate, it lines it up. And I'm now gonna ink it up with soft suede ink. And again, I think I showed you before, if you press on the top of the ink pads, they do pop open. And they don't go flying all over the place. The first time I showed some girls how to do that, it literally flew out of my hand and onto the table. I didn't hold on to it, it was, it was so funny. It's almost like I threw the ink pad at them, but I really didn't. Okay, there we go. So that looks pretty cute. And now I'm going to just snip him off. Oh, oh I lost my scissors. Let's see. Oh, there they are. I have to get that. Not very graceful, you guys. I apologize. Okay, there we go. We're going to set him aside, and we're going to color him in a minute. And I'm putting this back in. I have to clean this because that really scares me. I have ink on here. You guys will be laughing at me. I'll probably be wearing it. I'll probably go flying to my lap or something. Okay, so this is the trick. How do you get the doggy facing the other direction? You need to pull out your silicone mat. This thing is life changing. If you've never had one of these, you can use your glue gun on it. Uh, it doesn't wreck your table. Uh, we just did a technique where we put a glob of mono multi glue and took a sponge over a background to attach it to a card. And when my class was done, all the glue peeled off. It's just fantastic. And then the other nice thing it does is it does this uh, reverse mirror image technique. So we've got our silicone mat here. I'm just inking up the dog and I'm doing it in memento black ink. And I'm just gonna give it a good press. I always use the heel of my hand. Make sure I'm getting a good image. So now the image is on the mat. And remember, I've got it marked. I can actually see my pencil marks underneath. And I'm now going to rub the paper to transfer the image. There he is. OK, 
Okay. And then I'm going to put this back in. And I'm going to stamp them a second time. Now you might be wondering why am I doing it a second time. I will show you. Okay. So you have to remember what side's your mirror image. This was the side I did first, right? It's a little bit, it's a smidge lighter, so that sort of tells me what it is. And again, I'm going to bring out my Simply Chamois. This is not what the Simply Chamois looks like, you guys. I had one in here for my show. Where did I put it? This is what the Simply Chamois looks like. I really recommend this. This thing is great. I just cut mine into four pieces because it's easier for me to hold. And it just cleans things up really easy. Get the other side. Love this thing. And then when the ink starts transferring on my fingers, it's time to go to the sink and give it a little bath. Okay, so now I can put that out of the way. Oh, and I really should give this a clean because that's the other thing I could really see. Putting my Whisper White cardstock in the doggy image. Okay. So this is what we've got. We've got my little dog that I've stamped. And here's his happy little friend. And we're going to take some stamping blends. You can color with, with whatever you want. I don't like using um, aqua painter on Whisper White cardstock. I'd recommend Shimmery White. When you're using stamping blends, though, uh, they come in, you can either buy an individual color or they come in a combo pack. And I'm just going to color like this. Does that come with the tool? Sharon, what does what come with the tool? Um, the silicone mat. If you're asking about the silicone mat, it's $8.25. That's Canadian. I'm not sure if you're in Canada or not. And what I have done in the five, or in, in the section, I put a post with a link to my constant contact PDF for these projects and it has all the ordering numbers in there but it is separate I think that's what you were asking yes okay thank you thank you Sharon yes the silicone mat you buy it all by itself and if you look on that PDF I do have it I can't remember what page it is it's with all the stamping tools but you can do a lot of different things with the silicone mat. You can do some techniques as well. I think it's one of the Stampin' Up secrets. I have two, I have three of them. I really like to have four. The other nice thing I like is that you can actually use your snail adhesive on the silicone mat. And then if it goes off, you know normally it goes off on this paper and then you set something down and it sticks to it and ruins your project. That doesn't happen if it's on the mat. You just peel it off after. Okay, so my doggies are cute, but they need a bit of shading. That's where the dark stamp and blend comes in. So I'm just gonna go over. It kinda, I like these stamps because they kinda show you where to highlight already. The lines are in here. So that makes it really easy too. And we'll give this little doggy I love doggy stamps. If you don't, if you're not a dog lover, they do have a cat stamp as well with a punch that's called Nine Lives, and that's pretty cute. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna stamp out this little guy. There he is. Look, he's even got a little heart we could decorate. Okay, so there's our one happy puppy. Oh, and you know what? This little puppy, he has a home. Let's give him a collar. This set's so fun. It comes with a dog collar. Uh, what else does it have? A bone. I haven't played with it that much. I'm going to try this week. I try to feature a stamp set or a bundle or something. I'm going to try. I'm challenging myself to work with uh, work with this uh, doggy stamp set. What's it called? Happy Tails. Because I don't actually have a dog myself anymore. But my brother has two dogs, and I usually get... I had Benji. Benji was on my Facebook Live last week. He would not look at the camera. He was being really shy. And then little baby Monty. But Monty's a bit of a stinker, and he eats my paper projects. So I had a conference I was running in Edmonton. So I didn't have time for Monty this time. But next time, I will look after him. 
Okay, look, this dog has an owner, so he's a happy dog with a dog owner. This guy's a little sad. Maybe he's a stray. Looks pretty clean, though. Maybe he just lost his collar. Okay, there we go. Okay, now, this is the problem. Look what happens, guys. It doesn't line up. However, because this is the reversed image, because we stamped it in the first place the right way, the two images should be lined up. I might be a little bit off. Ta-da! See? They're a mirror image of each other. So go back and watch the video if you didn't catch how I did that. But I thought that was pretty awesome. There's a little bit of white showing. And if you don't like it, you can just trim it off. And if you know me, I that doesn't bother me at all. People always love getting my cards. I've never had somebody say, oh my goodness, there's a little smidge of extra white that shouldn't be on there. Never. Okay, that's cute. So that's the technique. You do your image on your silicone mat, put your paper on it, transfer it turn it around, and then stamp it the right way on this way. And then that's how you line up your doggy punch. Okay, so that's what we're making again. So let's pull this back in. So my two little dog friends are going to be here. Now, if you don't like the sentiments in here, if you don't think you'll use friends forever, which I have people I want to send it to, but if you, some people just don't like sayings like that. It's your day would work. Um, happy belated birthday. I should probably use that one. I am behind on birthdays again. So feel free to change it. Um, maybe instead of friends forever, since I've already got one of those, just put that on here. I think we'll do maybe time to celebrate. It's your day. Maybe we'll do it's your day. Oh my goodness. This is, I haven't even used this yet. Okay, I'm going to be really bad. I'm not even putting the label on. Or should I? Do you want to see how to put the label on? So this is our new cling mount stamps. You just have to be careful and take your time because I didn't do that and then my stamp went on crooked. So you peel off the backing off of the label part and then you peel off the backing off of your foam stamp and then you just line it up and hope for the best. And the nice thing is, look how sticky this is. It's fantastic. It no longer falls off your block, which makes me happy. I just have to take the time to actually do a good job of putting them together, which I don't always do. Okay, I am looking for my soft suede ink pad again. I see I have my green. Granny apple green. There's my soft suede. And again, it's just easier to pop it from the top. And then we'll have, it's your day. There we go. There's my two doggies. And I am punching it out with the one and a half inch circle punch because that's what fit the other sentiment. Could be a bit smaller. And then when you go to close our punches, there's this little latching mechanism which keeps it closed. If you're short on storage space or if you're hiding things from your husband and you need to, you know, shove as many in the drawer as possible. My husband just shakes his head at me. He kind of knows I have a buying problem. Oh, Celine says she just figured out how to put the labels on today. It is daunting sometimes don't you think I know sometimes I even though I've been demonstrating for a long time I have to watch videos and I still learn things I just have to laugh okay so I am making this this is the gingham gala designer series paper and I want it to fit here and I want to create two pennant shapes now I could just take my scissors snip in the middle and then go in from each side However, if you have a buying problem like I do, you probably have the tailored tag punch. And you can see I'm just putting it in this way. And I just sort of make sure that I have the equal amount of paper showing on each side. Yeah, I'm really funny. 
my husband came into my craft room and he goes, do you think you've spent a thousand dollars on this stuff? And I had to laugh because I'm sure it's higher. We, he doesn't ask usually and that's really good for our relationship. Because this stuff is just so pretty. I just want it all. And I ended up getting the starter kit during celebration. Well, like I said, almost 12 years ago. It was so fun. And that's why I needed the 20% discount. I did spend a lot. But, you know, stamps make me happy. Making pretty things really make me happy. Okay, that's pretty cute. So where's my little doggy friends now? Let's put one on this side, one on this side. That's pretty cute. Now, if I don't want them to fall off for sure, they could fall off with this. I think I'm going to grab my Stampin' Dimensionals if I can find them. I think we better use two, put one on the body, one on the head. If anybody has this set, post a card on my page. I'd love to see what you do with it. Because there's some, there's some spots so we can do Dalmatian doggies. I'm kind of curious to see how many dogs we could actually make. I have an old dog book. Maybe that's what I'll have to do is take a look. Okay, now I thought this card was cute, but I always liked to. I was thinking I needed to put silver thread behind it. But instead, what I did was uh, we sell these glitter enamel dots and I'm just taking a quick look because I had them in my little bag and then I took them out here they are so the glitter enamel dots come in four color they come in Bermuda Bay which I've used up granny apple green I think this is melon mambo and gorgeous grape they just add a nice accent and I like it because they're they're flat so when I go to mail this card to somebody um, I don't get charged extra postage because Canada Post they are so expensive sometimes if you have a lot of layers on your cards not that I don't love spending money on my friends but it gets a little crazy so I thought that just really finished off the card nicely what do you guys think do you like it and then what I did was make a coordinating envelope. And then, of course, it's got the little paw print in the center. So that's the second card. So this is a fun stamp. And then if you don't have the doggy set, you could easily substitute this for one of the flowers um, in the Painted Seasons bundle. You could easily put a couple flowers here, stamp a different sentiment, but still have this piece. So that's one thing I always tell people. If you don't have a stamp set, just use what you have. You can still create a beautiful card. Okay. Oh, and I should mention too, look at this one. I just made these little three by three cards really quick. I thought that was cute. There's the, yeah, there's my Dalmatian doggy. So I thought that was pretty cute too. Okay, now the last project some of you have seen, I know, Carolyn, you've already done this. It looks like this, but I've changed it up a little bit because I think with Easter coming, I wanted to show you a really fast project. So let me bring in my next bucket, just so I've got some stamping area available here. And I've changed it a little bit. Ooh, that's a problem. It's way, how did it get way over here? Okay, this is what we're making. What do you think? So I'm gonna show you in two seconds how to make these. You could easily make about 15 of these. This is a Rhonda Wade design. So for my team, I buy classes from Rhonda Wade every single month because she has great projects with great tips on how what we can do if you want to run it is use your demo number to run as a business. And I love getting classes from her because I don't have to design things all the time. That's the other reason. And they're always cute, quick, and fun. So this uses the Fable Friends stamp set, which is super cute. I love the little, the little rabbit. I love the little duck. I think I posted a card last week with the ducks. And then on Tuesday, if you live in Edmonton, I'm doing an Epicure party with my friend Sandy. 
It's going to be at, what time is it? 1 to 3.30. She's showing us how to do tacos and guacamole and salsa. And she's showing her products. And then we're going to stamp two cards. One of the cards is going to be with the doggy stamp set. And then another one's going to be using the squirrel. And there's no charge for that. You can just come on. Come on by. Hang out with us. I live on the south end of Edmonton. Kind of river bandish area. Okay, so grab another piece of six inch by six inch designer series paper. So you can see both two projects today use the same size of paper. Oh no, this was eight by eight. Never mind, don't listen to me. Eight by eight, but still uses designer series paper. Okay, and we are lining this up at two inches. I'm using the scoring blade on my paper trimmer and I scored it and then I'm moving it down to four inches. And then we're going to rotate it 90 degrees and do the same thing on the other side. So two inches and four inches. So easy. I need a so easy button. Okay, now it's probably a little hard for you guys to see, but all I'm doing is cutting to the first score line in the two places on this side and then on this side. And that's going to create our little Easter basket. Okay, there we go. And there is my second one. So I have four cuts in total. And now I'm just going to burnish the edges, fold it up. So nice having my bone folder. I usually don't have it around. Okay, and then what we need to do is we're gonna add adhesive on the back of this side and on the back of this side. Now if you want it to last a long time, which I do, we're going to use my tear and tape adhesive. I'll show you how this goes together. You are going to be shocked how easy this is. I think this project is brilliant because it is so quick and I have a lot of 6x6 six six paper. Okay, this is the trick. So you're going to bring these two points together at the top and then this already has adhesive on this inside part we're just going to pull it up like this same thing so bring these two points together and then fold up the middle and that holds it in place and then if you don't want this little flap flying in the wind we'll just put a tiny bit of snail adhesive to tack it down and that is your basket isn't that the best project ever now to make the little handle, we have this really great ribbon. It is called the Whisper White, it's got a weird name. I wrote it out for you guys though. What is it called? Hmm, silicone mat, stitch shapes. I don't even know. Does anybody know what that's called? Nope, no comments. Oh, flax ribbon. You know what, if I just read the ribbon, container or the or the spool it would actually tell me so all I'm going to do is take a stapler use whatever stapler you have I have a Stampin' Up one we do not sell this anymore sorry guys and I'm just gonna make it about this big you can use however much you want and then you can fill it up with Easter grass or we had some ready shreddy of it, um, that was in the clearance store. I don't know if it's still there. I just have pink left. I don't know. Do I have any pink on my little squirrel? You know what? We'll put some in. White would look better. I'll have to see if this stuff is still available on the clearance rack. I should buy like 10 of these. And that's it. Super cute. Now we're going to stamp our little squirrel. And if you don't have Fable Friends stamp set, if you have the Daisy Punch, that looks pretty cute too. Okay, so now we're going to get, here is my stamp. And I need some white cardstock, which is here. I'm going to get my black memento ink. There we go. So if anybody makes any of these projects, please post them. I would love to see what you make. Okay, and then my little squirrel, I'm going to color him in with Light Highland Heather. 
color in the little flower. You'll notice on Stampin' Blends there's a wide tip and then there is a bullet tip. Actually the bullet tip is a little bit easier to color with. You know what's interesting about it though? Same marker, it's a little bit lighter with the bullet tip. Maybe I'm not storing these flat. They should be stored flat. Isn't that interesting? Well, that would be something. Okay, and then we are going to get some Daffodil Delight for the center of the flower. We're going to get Granny Apple Green Light Stamp and Blend, and we're just going to color the flower like so. And then we're going to color his little sailor hat. Kind of looks like a sailor uniform, doesn't it? I think so. And this is dark balmy blue, but I really wanted light balmy blue. I just grabbed the wrong one. Does it matter? Nope, not at all. Okay, and then let's color his jacket with a... Oh, I've got light rich razzleberry. Okay, that'll work. I think I was wanting Highland Heather, but that's okay. Looks pretty nice color. And you know what? This will probably match my um, my Easter grass. My ready shreddy. Okay, now I'm going to color crumb cake ink and I want my light crumb cake. Because then I can add in some darker shading for my little squirrel. I love critter stamps. They're just so cute. I think I own every one. I used to do lots of kids' classes. My babies are all grown up now. So sad. Well, not really, because they're really fun to hang out with. So I guess that's a good thing. And it does give me more time to stamp. Okay, and I'm just going to add some highlights now to my squirrel with my darker Stampin' Blend. And then I'm going to be taking my... This is my two inch circle punch. And again, when you release the latch at the back, you can center, oh, my paper, too much paper. I'll just give it a little trim. A little Stampin' Surgery. There we go. And then I'm gonna use two and a quarter inch circle punch. And that will create a backing for me. Now I just need some Easter eggs. Okay, there's that. And then I'll just attach this to my little basket. And I think this will be really cute for Easter. I'm gonna give everybody this filled with some mini eggs. Okay, and that is that. What do you think of that project? Do you like that? When I see Deneen Webb joined. Hi, Deneen. I'm almost done, so you might have to watch the replay. But I will go through the projects that I did. So we did this cute little one using Fable Friends. This super cute one using Happy Tails, where I showed you the technique using the silicone mat. And then the first one we did, I don't know which one I like better. The butterflies so this is called a pinwheel card right because it's got a pinwheel design on the front of the card and then if anybody wants to order anything I have the hostess code here if you order $40 in products I will send you in the mail uh, the kits to make these three cards you'll have to use whatever stamps you want um, but you can have the kits and what else was I going to say about that? Oh, yes, and I've loaded up the PDF file on my Facebook page so that you can actually take a look at the PDF and get the order number for the silicone mat, anything you want. So thank you so much for stopping by, you guys. I was so worried nobody would show up, and then I would be stamping with my by myself. So thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed it tonight. And, oh, I see Marines here, too. And then what I'm going to do is, on Tuesday, on my Facebook Live, I will announce who the winners are of the door prize. So I have Just Because, and then I have some pearl, or these aren't pearl rhinestones, pink rhinestones. So thank you so much, guys, and have a great night. Bye.